Okay, so Locke still has to answer for us the question of what is the state of nature like? And he says part of it has to do with human nature. Uh, Hobbes would say this place is dark, scary, brutish, awful, always at war. Uh, because people are selfish and because there are no rules. Locke says that's not exactly the best explanation of what the state of nature would be like. He says there's something about humans that is different from all the other animals on the planet. And, and he, he is a little bit uh, spiritual here. You know, we are, uh, he would say, God's creation. So what makes humans different is that we have reason. And he says uh, that that is, that is actually the, the law, our own reason. He says we can, we, we can know right from wrong. We know that it is wrong to kill other people. We know it's wrong to steal from other people. And we know it's wrong to enslave other people. He would argue that that's known across cultures because it's something almost innate in us, that, that we have that moral compass. Um, so many of you, when thinking about Dwayne Johnson taking your apples, would say he wasn't just taking them, he was stealing them, that he had violated some sort of rule that we know to exist. Um, so that law of reason actually governs the state of nature. Um, and humans know this. Now, the problem is not everyone will follow that law. But at least when they break that law, they know they're breaking it. Unlike um, Hobbes' ideas that, that those people wouldn't consider it to be a law, so they wouldn't knowingly be violating that law. Locke is saying, we, we do know that. We know that you should not kill. You should not steal. You should not enslave. People still do it, and that's what makes the state of nature not a great place to be. That's what moves us to come up with another idea, and that other idea is the social contract. So humans wanted out of the state of nature, not because it was always total war, but because there was always the threat of war. There was always uh, the constant fear that someone might kill you or steal from you. Um, now, if the law of reason says that you shouldn't kill, you shouldn't steal, um, and you shouldn't enslave, well, that takes us um, to the idea that you have rights. So if, if there are some laws, that law of reason says that you have a, a right. Um, and here are two quotes from Locke. I'll read the first one. All mankind being all equal and independent, no one ought to harm another in his health, liberty, or possessions. And every man has a property in his own person. This nobody has a right to but himself. Um, so here Locke is explaining the natural rights. And those natural rights are life, liberty, and property. Um, and that those are natural, that they are... Uh, born into all of us, that we know those are what you have a right to. Um, so, back to our analogy, if you have a right to life, liberty, property, and Dwayne Johnson is taking your property, you have a right to protect your property. Do you have a right to kill Dwayne Johnson over this? I mean, you have that right to protect yourself, and that is self-defense. And in the state of nature, that seems like one of your only options. Uh, but again, in this case, if you believe that you have a right to, to life and that people ought to not kill one another, this can be a challenging question to answer, and one I, I can't answer for you today. So people know that they want to keep their life, their liberty, their property. But other than those few concerns... The state of nature, remember, is not a bad place. You got total freedom, you got total equality. So John Locke says that humans did come together because they wanted to protect life, liberty, and property. But he argues that your government should really only do that uh, in order to protect your freedom and your equality. You enjoyed that in the state of nature by entering into the social agreement, by entering into society. You should not have to relinquish all your other rights. So in that social contract, we come together and we give up some freedoms for security. What freedoms do you give up? 
Well, the social contract protects people from life, uh, protects people's lives, their liberty, their property. So you give up uh, the freedom to steal. You had that freedom in the state of nature, but when you enter the social contract, in order to protect your property, you have to agree to not steal other people's property. Same thing with um, harming them. Another thing you give up, and that one often gets overlooked, is you get you give up your freedom to retaliate. In the state of nature, Dwayne Johnson takes your apples. You do have a right to protect your life and potentially kill him. You are, in that instance, executing him for breaking that law and for stealing your property. But once you enter the social contract, you, you cannot just uh, seek your own justice that way. You cannot be your own... Uh, executive. So you come together, you may not steal, you may not harm others, but also when someone harms you, it is not left to you um, to, to seek that justice. But you give up that freedom because you want security that others won't harm against you. Here's another uh, good quote for connecting us to uh, our own revolution in this country, but uh, it says, the end of law is not to abolish or restrain, but to preserve and enlarge freedom. For in all the states of created beings capable of law, where there is no law, there is no freedom. I think this one's rather poetic. If you have no law, sure you might have total freedom, but where you have no law, you then uh, live in that fear. And that fear keeps you from picking those apples. That fear keeps you from... Uh, pursuing a better life, one with a cozy bed and a door on your, on your den. So we create a government to protect those fundamental rights so that you really can be free. Um, and the government should not do anything more or anything less. And it's, un, it's important to note both of those. The nothing more. If the government does more, if the government is really involved in your life, it's probably violating some of your freedom. Um, but if the government can't even protect your life, your liberty, or property, it's not doing enough, and you might need yourself a new government. So, back to the original question. Why are property rights so significant in American political culture? You see here that when you can't go to sleep at night knowing that the property you worked hard for remains yours, then you're going to continue to live in a in a sort of base state. And so if we want real progress and ingenuity where people work hard and strive for a better life, that is only done if we protect property, if we protect their hard work. Um, and so that might be the philosophical explanation for why Americans are so protective of their property rights, even though most Americans couldn't articulate this explanation. Um, it's more complex than just more wealth and more money makes you happier, but rather knowing that your wealth, knowing that your hard work remains yours, allows you to pursue other things that will make your life better. So can the government take your life, your liberty, or your property? John Locke says the purpose, the purpose of government is to protect life, liberty, and property. Um, but you might be able to now take a, a look at our government and notice that in many instances the government takes your life. The government takes your life. Uh, we have capital punishment in this country. You live in Texas, one of the states that uh, sentences uh, more people to death than any other state in, in any other country. Um, many other countries, I should say. Uh, also, it can take your liberty. You may be imprisoned if you break a law. And it can take your property. It takes your property. Um, if you get pulled over for speeding, you pay a, a fine. It takes your property uh, through taxes. So there definitely are instances where the government takes your life, liberty, or property. But the idea that jo John Locke would, would say here is that the government shouldn't do it arbitrarily, shouldn't do it randomly. Your government should actually be protecting those things. So yes, the government can take your property. I've I left this one out. It can take it for public use. Um, if it pays you for it, we'll talk about that at the end of this semester. Um, when I say yes, after it has followed due process, your life or your liberty can be taken if you've 
uh, broken a law, committed a crime, and you've had your trial and you've been convicted. So the government can take your life, liberty, and property, but we know it is supposed to actually protect those things, and in many, uh, and, and we'll see if the government does protect those things. So your homework is to read the Declaration of Independence, which is in the packet, um, and go through and highlight the things that we covered here about John Locke's ideas that also correspond to Thomas Jefferson's ideas in the Declaration of Independence. I think you'll find that uh, Thomas Jefferson was strongly influenced by John Locke. So highlight those, uh, make a couple little notes on it, and be ready to discuss that.